Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Speak the Truth podcast. I'm your host for today's episode, Matt Tardio. Today's episode is being sponsored by Qualia Synalytic and Huel. I know it might be hard to believe, but I'm actually 40 years old. And if you're wondering why, maybe you need to ask yourself if you've heard of Synalytics yet. It's a class of ingredients discovered less than 10 years ago, and they're being called the biggest discovery of our time for promoting healthy aging and enhancing your physical prime. Your life goals in your career are beyond requiring productivity. But let's be honest, the aging process is not our friend. And when it comes to endless energy and productivity, that ladies and gentlemen, is why I use Qualia Synalytic. If someone would have told me that there was a science-backed ingredient that could help me feel 15 years younger in a matter of months, I wouldn't have believed it until I tried Qualia Synalytic. As we age, everyone accumulates senescent cells in their body. Senescent cells cause symptoms of aging, such as aches, discomfort, slower workout recoveries, sluggish mental and physical energy that are all associated with that middle-aged feeling. These cells are known as zombie cells, and in order to combat it, you can take Qualia Synalytic just two days a month. Not every day. I hate that. Two days a month, and they have a 100-day money-back guarantee. Since I've been taking it, I've been sleeping better, have higher levels of energy, and the big one for me, I just have a more positive outlook on life. I also like to think it's made me look just a little bit younger. Resist aging at the cellular level. Try Qualia Synalytic. Go to qualialife.com slash Rob for up to 50% off and use code Rob at checkout for an additional 1-5% off. For your convenience, Qualia Synalytic is also available at select GNC locations near you. That's Q-U-A-L-I-A-Life.com slash Rob for an extra 15% off your purchase. This is going to be the topic of today's discussion. This gentleman right here, but more specifically, not just this gentleman, but we're going to actually be talking about this sucker right here. This is the VP. Nine. Now, a lot of you guys, for some reason, think that this is the pistol he used in order to conduct this assassination. So here's what I'm going to do for you today. Not only am I going to convince you that he did not use a VP9, so you can refer everybody to this video when they tell you that shooter used a VP9. We're going to go ahead and get rid of that right up front. But then I'm going to also prove to you that he was not a professional shooter. Why is this so important to understand? Because it helps you zero in on who it is. Now, I'm not kidding you when I tell you that I have seen literal FBI analysts say that he was a professional assassin. So what do we know about this guy and where the heck did he come from? Well, we know that this photograph that's up on your screen is booked, um, I guess, at a hostel where he became a little bit flirtatious with the lady that was checking him in. He was able to pull down his mask and that's how they ended up getting this photograph. But he also used a fake ID when he ended up checking into this particular hostel. Well, how did he get there? We know that he came from Georgia sometime at the end of last month on a Greyhound bus all the way up to New York. Now, Interesting enough about Greyhound buses, you don't necessarily need to use a credit card in order to get yourself a bus ticket, but you do need a government issued ID in order to get on the bus. You can pay for your ticket in cash at the terminal. Likely what this guy ended up doing and then use his fake ID, because let's be honest, how many people at the Greyhound bus station are likely checking on him? I don't think that many. Then we have the shooting itself. On the way to the shooting, the guy ended up taking the subway. This is him exiting the subway. There you can see him with his backpack and all of that crap on. Now, just got released not that long ago that they ended up finding his backpack over inside of Central Park. So the guy likely switched everything out. They also said that they have images of him going into the subway, but not exiting it. So they think that likely... After the shooting, he took his bike, went to Central Park, ditched the bag, changed out, goes into the subway, but they never catch him exiting it. So they think that he rode the subway out of New York. Now, that has led everybody to believe, in my opinion, to start bringing up these assassination deals, right? Like, is he a professional assassin? And that's where the VP9 ends up coming in over here. 
We're going to talk about why it is not, like I said, it is not the VP9 and I'm going to convince you of it. And here is the pistol up on your screen. That is the VP9 itself. When we go and we take a look at it, one, it sells for right around 2300 US dollars. But um, interesting, as we look at it, I want you guys to pay attention to this little thing right here on the back. Let me see if I can zoom in on it for you, which I cannot. You see this little turn style deal right here on the back, this little knob that's very important when it comes down to how this pistol operates. So this pistol operates completely and totally different than pretty much any other pistol in design. And we can go into the history of it and where it came from and all that crap. I don't think it's important. All that you need to know is it wasn't this pistol. And here is why. This video I'm about to put up on the screen is a man shooting the VP9 for the very first time. And we're going to take a look at it. And then I'm going to point out a couple things in the video. And then we're going to go over to the video of the shooting. And what you are not going to see is the same like functions of operation of this pistol in this video compared to what the gentleman was doing in the video during the shooting. So here's the video itself of him shooting. it. I'm going to go ahead and mute it now just for transparency purposes. This came from Thompson Stationary Armory. The guy's got 2.8 thousand six followers. I'm not trying to steal anything from him, but I'm going to go ahead and end up showing it anyways. Now, we're going to go ahead and pull this up to when he goes to go shoot this sucker. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to watch him load this pistol. He talks about the suppressor and everything else. I believe he's running subs. Now, notice what he just did right here when he chambered around. Let me back it up. When he goes to chamber the round, he pushes the bolt forward and he's got to rotate it in order to get it to lock in place. Watch. Push forward, turn and lock. Now he's going to come up, draw his bead and he's going to shoot. Now he unlocks it and he goes to dump the round out. Notice how he's got to keep his dang hand on there because, well, one, it's not going to go forward on its own, but two, he's keeping his hand on there because he needs to make sure that after he's done dumping the round out that he pushes it back forward and rotates it closed. So he dumps the round out, pushes it forward, rotates it closed. Now, I want you to notice something else about this sucker locking up the way in which it did. If we go all the way back to his very first shot, and we watch it again, what you are not going to see is any gas coming out of there. Now, I'm not saying that gas cannot escape, all right? But it, again, if you watch right up over here towards the chamber, you are not going to see any gas escape, likely because as you go in and you rotate that sucker shut, all of that gas is being able to go forward. That allows it to be much, much more accurate, which is the benefit of having a bolt action firearm. There you go. You see him unlock, dump the round, and he moves on. Again, does it, unlocks, dumps, moves on. Notice how the round's just falling out. Now, interesting enough about this pistol, it doesn't matter if you rotate it to the left or to the right, the round's pretty much gonna fall out the exact same way every time because of how it's designed. There you actually saw it kick out the top and he's able to push back up and get it back on site. So you guys see how that operates. Now, did you notice when he opened it up right there? So gas does escape this sucker, okay? And what you're seeing is the gas coming out. I want you to notice when he unlocks it and pulls it back, you're gonna see some gas coming out the top. Notice how there isn't gas coming out after he shoots it, but when he unlocks it and opens it, there you see the gas come out. It was even pouring out till he pushed it back forward and locked it. There is no gas escaping from this sucker. Not one ounce until he opens it up, turns it sideways, and dumps the, the, the casing out afterwards. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go over the actual shooting video. Now, I did blur out Brian Thompson, the CEO that got murdered. So you will not see him getting shot, and we are going to be focusing on the shooter. So the video is blurred out, and we're doing this for documentary and educational discussion. Now, we're going to watch it from start to finish, and then I'm going to give you a slowed down bit of what's going on. That's it. That's what you get. All right. Just what? 13 seconds of the actual shooting incident itself. So the first thing we're going to notice when he walks up is he comes up and he chambers around. It definitely looks like he pulls down, lets go and chambers around when he comes up. You can watch it again. I've got slowed down still shots of it. I'm going to show you in a second. Boom. Chambers around. Now, did you notice when that shot went off the amount of gas that is escaping out of the top of this pistol? Don't worry, I'm going to explain all this in just a sec, but you can see a lot of gas escaping out of the top of this pistol. So let's watch again. Watch the gas. It's about to go. Now, when you see him 
come down to work the action on this pistol. What you see him do is pull back and let go. He does not push forward and turn. You do not see his hand rotate. He lets go. You ready? We're going to watch it again. I hope everybody was able to see that. That's literally him working the action right there on this little frame. There is no unlock, back, forward, lock. None. The actual way he operated this pistol is that indicative of a semi-automatic pistol commonly found here in the United States of America. And we're going to be talking about why he's an amateur shooter based on this particular platform here in just a second. One last time, we're going to watch him fire that first shot, and then we're going to watch him go through, and I'm going to continue to point a couple things out. Now, if you didn't see it, maybe you just did. Here's something else he did. Right here in this portion of the video, I want you to watch. What it's going to appear that he is doing is it's going to appear... Like he is taking that pistol and he's taking his hand and he's slamming it into the back of the pistol. And I'm going to explain that to you in a demonstration here in just a second. Watch it. You're going to watch him do it. Right there. Let's go back. See if you can catch it. Did you see him do it? He hit it. Then he grabs it and goes to do it again. Now, this is after doing that same action numerous times. Now, some people are led to believe that that is him working the action on the VP9. But if that's the case, why didn't he do it all the way back here when he clearly just slingshot and let it go? Can't be a VP9. We go back to the actual function and operation of this pistol. Unlock, pull back, dump, engage. That's the action of that pistol. And even if he was really, really proficient at it, we don't see it in that video. What we see is him quickly trying to correct a malfunction in that pistol and cycle it every single time until that point when you see him ram his hand up on the back of that pistol. And we're going to talk about it. He's trying to force the slide forward for a reason. He gets really frustrated in that moment and he starts jacking around with it quite a bit. So as he's walking forward, you can see him doing all sorts of stuff, trying to correct malfunction on the pistol. Now, let's talk about I think at this point in time, I've made myself perfectly clear. There is not a snowball's chance in hell that that was a VP9. Now I'm going to show this for the camera. These are often what is referred to as snap caps. They are not real bullets. They are not real projectiles. They are little ones that pretend like they are. They're dummy rounds. They act as if they are real. And I've got three of them right now that are going to be loaded into this magazine. So I'm going to go ahead and jam three of those little bad boys in there. I also have this pistol here. It's a Glock 19 for those who are curious. And yes, it's dirty. I just took it to the range and I need to clean it. It doesn't matter because what I'm going for is a malfunction on this pistol. Now, you will notice a couple things about this pistol as I hold it up over the top. You notice how on this side that I'm running my finger down, there is an opening. Now, that opening is commonly referred to as an ejection port. That ejection port is what allows those freaking uh, casings to come out the right side of the gun as you are holding it. Over on the other side, you'll notice there is not a slide cut for that because the slide would be cut pretty much in half. So it's just a straight there. So here we have it. You guys can see it's completely and totally empty, but right. So ejection port. Now, this is a Huel. This is a full on freaking meal. And it's at the end of the day as I'm knocking this out, it's a perfect time to have it. I'm going to tell you guys right now, if you are running late and you got no time for breakfast, you're starving. If you've ever been there before, like I have, dude, you get it. I, I get it. You're racing to meetings, practice, school pickups, whatever it is. But what if there was a delicious, nutritious meal, which could be ready in seconds? This podcast is sponsored by Huel, H-U-E. L, the world's number one complete nutrition brand with over 400 million meals sold worldwide. Yes, you heard that right. 400 million. Huel is trusted by people like you looking to fuel their days with convenient, complete nutrition. What do you get out of this meal, right? Like it's very important because I am, I am going to have me a meal here. 
look, what are you getting out of it? Well, number one, you're getting 35 grams of protein. And I think if, if, if you're into meal shakes and or like things of that nature, there's something that we're always concerned about, which is added sugar. And what blew my mind after I actually tasted this is that there is only, and I say only six grams total of sugar. Out of that, four grams are added. You think that's a lot of sugar for a meal? You're out of your dang mind. Like that is one of the hardest things to get under control, especially to have it taste as good as it does. And Huel done figured it out. That is a buttload of protein packed into one little bottled meal. And you got to love it because it's good for you. Now, for some reason, you guys just don't believe me. I've got the exclusive offer for you. I want you to take the leap into the community of the hooligans with this exclusive offer only for new customers. 15% plus a free gift with the code Rob at Huel.com. That's 15% plus a free gift for new customers with the code Rob at Huel.com. Unlock a healthier, easier way to eat with Huel. Nutritionally complete meals in minutes so that you can focus on what really matters. This little guy, which is going to be hard for you to make out, but I'm going to try because it's going to be on camera. You can see it right there. Get out of here, you. Right here, I'm touching the tip of the screwdriver to it. I'm gonna zoom in on it. That little guy right there is known as the ejector. And what ends up happening is the slide comes back and it hits the ejector. The, the slide grabs onto the casing, it comes back. The casing hits the ejector and it gets drug across it. And that's actually what forces the round to go or the, the projector, the casing to go off out of the right side. Now, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take this Glock and I'm going to take these dummy rounds and I'm going to insert them into the pistol and I'm going to chamber a round. There is now a dummy cartridge loaded into this pistol. So when I pull the trigger, it will not go bang. So I'm going to pull the trigger. You're going to hear it click. That click is the striker going forward and impacting the back of the cartridge, which would then cause the explosive chain to go off. Now, what ends up happening as that projectile is getting fired down the barrel is gases are also being forced backwards and that ends up working the action on this pistol. Now, if I'm gripping it properly and the slide ends up coming back, what you're gonna see is that cartridge is going to fall out the right side of the gun and I'm going to lock the slide to the rear just for reference. And you can see there is another a dummy cartridge sitting on top. Now, I'm going to go ahead and send the slide forward again, but I'm going to do it at a very easy rate. Now, sometimes, but not every time, but often with these guns, this one is a very well-oiled machine because it's mine, all right? But you'll end up getting the slide stuck right back here in the rear. Now, brand new round chambered, okay? And what should happen is I should be able to pull the trigger and cause it to go off. You'll notice it didn't go click until that slide went forward. So in the video, when we see this individual take the back of his pistol and force his hand on it. What he is attempting to do is get that slide to go forward so that it goes fully into battery. And then when he pulls the trigger, it would go bang. I hope that's perfectly clear. When I go to correct a malfunction on this pistol, let's say I get a click and no bang or it goes bang and it doesn't eject the cartridge. What I want to be able to do with this sucker as I'm out shooting this pistol, I want to make sure that I rotate when I go to correct it to the right, because remember, we talk about the ejection port being on the right side. I want to be able to rotate it to the right so that that projectile comes out. And all I'm going to do is pull the slide back while rotating it right. And that projectile come out and it'll chamber another one. Here's what's going to happen if I do it the other way around. I'm going to pull the trigger. You're going to hear a click, no bang, because it's a dummy round. And when I pull the slide back and I do it wrong, let's say I reach over the top of it like he does in the video, watch what happens. Aha, we have a problem. We have a malfunction. It ends up getting stuck. Now in numerous parts of this sucker, in numerous parts of this video, what you end up seeing this guy doing is you end up seeing him, how do I wanna say this? Struggling with his pistol. After he fires a couple shots and he goes to fix it. And the reason we see him struggling is we see him doing this number in order to fix it. Pistol is clear, there's no more cartridges in there, no more dummy cartridges, okay, perfectly safe gun. So what we see him doing 
is we see him grabbing the slide in this manner and down and letting go and working it in this way and coming back on top. That's bad. That's very bad. It can allow him to short stroke and not get around chambered. It can also allow, I don't know, let's say rounds not to eject. It can cause all sorts of malfunctions. So an experienced shooter would not do that. An experienced shooter, when they have a malfunction, will come back, they'll rack and roll that round out, establish their new grip and get it back on target. That's not what we see this gentleman doing. So with that knowledge in mind, I again want you to watch this video. We now know how the VP9 operates and we now know, we now know how a semi-auto pistol operates. So what we're actually seeing here, right there, when this guy goes and he whacks the back of it, that is him attempting to force that pistol into battery because it will not shoot without it forward. And then we see him struggle and try to clear malfunctions while rolling that pistol the wrong way. Now you'll notice every single time he has a malfunction, he rolls that pistol to the left to the inner side of his body. And when he does that, that ejection port is facing up, working against gravity, causing those shells to potentially get stuck inside of the firearm. One more time, just so you guys are watching. So you want Matt's opinion on who this gentleman is? This is a very smart man that didn't want to get caught. He had a fake ID. Those aren't hard to come by. I can pay a homeless guy to go get me one if I want, or I can find a homeless guy that's a high on freaking drugs, give him a freaking hundred bucks and take his crap. It doesn't matter. There's lots of different ways to get IDs if I want one. Now, when it comes down to how he went about doing it, going up on a Greyhound bus, traveling all the way up there, doing all of those things, planning out a subway. Yeah, he's a smart individual. He's a smart guy. He figured out how to do it. And we know additionally that this guy likely has some sort of massive complex. And when I say he has some sort of a massive complex, I mean it because you got to remember in this photograph, this knucklehead is on a trip up to New York to kill somebody, to take the life of the CEO. And we see him inside of this, you know, hostel, right? Leaning on the counter and bow jangling and talking to some gal. And he actually, for the first time, pulls his mask down. That, ladies and gentlemen, it tells me that he is not some type of professional, but he's a freaking creep. He thinks very highly of himself. He's clearly been to the gun range once or twice. He knows the operation of a pistol. He's got the balls to be able to go up there and do it. He is definitely a sociopath of some sort. But what he is not, ladies and gentlemen, is a professional flipping assassin for crying out loud. He could be hired. He's not a gunfighter. I'll tell you that much. He could be hired to go up there and do this. That's always a possibility. But at the end of the day, what we don't see in this video is a VP9. And what we don't see is somebody that has like a full understanding of how to actually run a semi-auto pistol. That just doesn't happen. I told you I'd show you a still shot. Here's your still shot. Right as he's coming into frame, you can see his hand on the pistol up towards the front, going to pull that slide back and chamber around. Here's the next thing that we have. We have him doing what's called a Charlie's Angel pose or that freaking barrel and everything's up and he's fishing going down to put that freaking pistol on target. Again, not a good shooter. He's familiar, but he doesn't know wholeheartedly how to actually shoot, shoot. Now I want to point this out. I took this video, <clears throat> I took this video and understand that the surveillance footage is, I don't know, probably like three to four feet above his head, more than likely, maybe a fish eye cam, right? Something of that nature, but it's pretty high up there. So the angle could be a little bit off, but when you level everything out and you draw a straight line to the other guy, it definitely appears like it's aimed a little bit lower on him. Now, this is something that you can go and look for yourself, and it's a little bit too hard to see, but it is a theory of mine that potentially you had what's known as a baffle strike. That is inside of the suppressor, you have different baffles, and if those baffles are out of line, then you can have an issue. Also, if you have a direct thread suppressor that's going onto your particular firearm, and it requires a little bit of tuning sometimes. So it is also possible that the reason he's having issues with his gun, why it's causing so many malfunctions is because it wasn't properly tuned. Sometimes they're kind of like finicky, like a car, you know, like I add on a part to a car, I got to do extra things in order to make the car run correctly.
Now, this one I look at is a, like the perfect still image for what everybody should pay attention to. This is the perfect still image, which shows him rolling that pistol inward into the left and not properly using the ejection port on that particular firearm. I hope that settles all of the controversy, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining me for another episode of the Speak the Truth podcast. I'm your host, Matt Tardio. Peace, love, happiness, and God bless. I am out of here.